Well, I'm a few weeks late, but traveling nonstop for a month will do that to you. But it was Halloween season a while back. That's one of my favorite times of the year. And surprisingly to many, The Wheel of Time has some really scary moments. It's an odd thing, really. In a book series with zero swear words, an almost prudish depiction of sex, or complete lack of any sex really, there are enormous amounts of violence, gore, and some very horror-like scenes. Some of these things would be beyond horrific to see play out in person. In today's video, I'll break down the 10 scariest moments from the Wheel of Time in this special three to four week late Halloween episode. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers all the way through the last book in the series, A Memory of Light. If you haven't finished the series, watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. Now before getting into the list of spooky and horrifying scenes from the books, let's first thank the video sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest supplier of audiobooks, and the Wheel of Dime audiobooks are really darn good. It's actually one of my favorite ways to experience the story now. If you've never done audiobooks, I highly recommend checking them out. Just head to audibletrial.com forward slash nameless, sign up for the free trial, You'll get a free audiobook of your choice, and you can keep it regardless of whether you keep the service or not. You get a completely free audiobook. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash nameless and get your free book. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get even more Wheel of Time content. That's what I make here on the channel. Now, let's get into the top 10 scary and horrific moments from the Wheel of Time. Coming in at number 10 on my list is Egwene Alvere's capture and enslavement by the Shan Chan in The Great Hunt. If you don't think this is scary or horrific, just picture this. You get done traveling for days in the deep dark of the ways, following an Aes Sedai who's supposedly taking you to help a friend. When you finally leave that infinite blackness of the ways, you emerge into a clearing with a bunch of strange looking soldiers and women. They slap a collar on your neck and they start treating you like a pet. You have no control over yourself, no ability to fight back, and you're facing the complete loss of your autonomy forever. Not to mention relentless beatings and punishments. This is about as awful of a thing as can be imagined, and it happens so early in the books. The Shan Chan are awful, and this is one of the main reasons why we see them as such. Coming in at number nine on my list, we have Ma Shin Shin or the Black Wind. The Black Wind is an entity that lives within the ways, an ancient realm built by the male Aes Sedai to help the Ogier travel between their steading. The Black Wind didn't always live there though. Originally the ways were bright and full of life and traveling them was pleasant. But over time, the corruption of the Dark One on Sidene manifested in the ways and they began to slowly darken, wither, and die. Mashin Shin came about as part of this corruption. It's unknown if it's a manifestation of the taint itself or just a product of it, but Mashin Shin is somewhat sentient and it travels the ways in Hunt of Travelers. So what makes that so scary? When Mashin Shin comes close, you first begin to feel a breeze where there is otherwise no wind in the ways. Then you begin to hear voices and sounds speaking of horrific and vile acts. Those that come in contact with Ma Shin Shin lose their minds and eventually lose their souls as Ma Shin Shin consumes them from the inside. Those that leave come out mindless zombies without a soul. What is so scary is the sheer evil that it represents and the horrific things that those who encounter Ma Shin Shin experience. One of the freakiest moments from the series comes in The Great Hunt, when the party searching for the Horn of Valir with Rand, Matt, Perrin, and Ingtar, and the rest of the Shinarans, come across a village where Padon Fane had been. The village was empty, save for one dead body, that of a Murdral nailed to a door. So why is this so scary? Well, up until this point in the story, Murdral have been seen as near invincible killers, the most deadly agents of the Shadow. To see a Murdral so callously nailed to a door, it becomes clear that Padon Fane is no normal dark friend. How could he have done this to a Murdral? The fact that we never truly get an answer to that question adds to the freakiness of the event. We're left to wonder as to how Padon Fane could have done this. This is a theme that Robert Jordan uses with Padon Fane quite often, hinting at the awful things he's capable of, but never showing us how he does them. The aura of mystery and danger surrounding him is so great it makes him awesome as a character. Mm -hmm. 
Coming in at number seven on the list, we have the section from The Gathering Storm where Simurgh, using the Domination Band, gains control over Rand. Now in this scene, Simurgh is able to get the Domination Band around Rand's neck and forces him to hurt and almost kill Min. Now this scene is so awful and scary simply because of who Simurgh is and what she might be capable of doing. She is the Shadow's torturer. She has a reputation of causing pain in the most creative possible ways. She's a sadist and enjoys the pain of others, so knowing that she now has complete control over Rand is beyond frightening. She then causes almost irreparable damage to Rand's mind by forcing him to almost kill men with his bare hands to feel the life leaving her as he strangles her. The Domination Band is so much worse than an IDOM as it allows the person controlling it to physically control the other person as well. The anxiety created by this scene is palpable, and it's very deservedly a freaky sequence that I almost hate reading. Coming in at number six on the list, we have Pot on Fane's attack on Rand in Kyria. It isn't so much that Fane's attack that is scary, but the circumstances surrounding it. As Rand crashed a get together of those who were set to oppose him, he ended up in a duel with Torum Riotin. The duel was interrupted by fog seeming to come out of nowhere and surrounding the entire get together. Now this was no ordinary fog though. Cries of anguish and death began to sprout up around coming from the fog and it became clear that it was killing those that it touched. Rand, Cadswain, and Min and their party are forced to try and fight their way out of the fog, attempting to fight images that looked humanoid that were really just made of mist. Their channeling proved somewhat effective. Then Panan Fane came out of the fog and nicked Rand with his dagger right on top of his old wound. Rand almost dies, and that eerie fog and the screams coming from all around, coupled by Pot on Fane dashing out of the fog to inflict what should have been a killing blow, makes this an incredibly freaky scene and worthy of the list. Breaking into the top five on the list, we have the Golom. There isn't a particular scene here that we're referring to, but really every single time he's in a scene. The Golom was a construct created by Aganor during the War of Power that was designed to assassinate Aes Sedai. The Golom is completely impervious to the One Power and can't be damaged by it at all. It can move at superhuman speeds and is strong enough to rip someone apart limb from limb. It can also contort its body and fit through a keyhole if it needs to, almost like the T-1000 from Terminator. It drinks blood to survive and it's literally terrifying. The reason the Golom makes this list is the sheer number of freaky scenes that contain the Golom. It's an unstoppable killing machine, and from Herod Fell being ripped apart to the slaughter that was the Terangriol storage house in Abu Dar, the Golom repeatedly kills in vicious ways. I'm genuinely worried for Matt every time the Golom is around, and the fear Matt must have felt knowing that the thing was hunting him was palpable. Pot on Fane makes his next appearance on the list at number four with his appearance in the last battle. Despite Pot on Fane's death being somewhat of a letdown for many fans, myself included, Pot on Fane's appearance in the last battle appeared to be leading to something much more, and it was sort of terrifying. At this point, Pot on Fane was at the height of his power. He had the Shadar Logoth dagger and had been wandering, moving towards killing Rand. He had the complete abilities of Mashadar now and could manifest the fog at will. Additionally, he gained the ability to animate dead bodies and corrupt those around him instantly. In the last battle, he marched on Thakandar and Sheogul with an army of raised shadow spawn and humans, constantly adding to his horde with everyone that he encountered. Imagine seeing an army of undead Trollocs, worms, and other shadow spawn marching with Pot on Fane at the center, killing whoever gets in the way. Truly very creepy. So here is another super creepy occurrence in the Wheel of Time. In a memory of light, Moradin hosts a meeting of the remaining Forsaken in his Dream Shard, which is a split reality off of the main reality where he gets to control everything that happens. Inside of the Dream Shard, Malgideon observes some truly horrifying things that defy reality. The meeting takes place on a disc surrounded by water, but in the water, which was very, very clear, there were hundreds of people chained to the bottom, perpetually drowning. Morden would not allow them to die, but they had the feeling of drowning constantly, always trying to get air. To add to it, 
there was an unknown creature below them that was pulling them under and eating them. And all we saw was blood, which, which added to the desperation of those people that were drowning. Combine all of this with fire that gives off no heat, and you are left with a horrifying and surreal environment that would have been beyond freaky to see in reality. With number two on our list, we have a very disturbing sequence that couldn't have happened to a better person in the story. Mogidian was released from her captivity in Saladar by Halima and told to report to Sheogul directly. Once she arrives, she is taken in front of Shaidar Haran and the Dark One in the Pit of Doom and put under a mind trap, which takes away her autonomy on the pain of death. She is tortured by Shaidar Haran. She is then forced to relive these moments over and over and over in a vacuole or a created reality. This is an incredibly awful punishment, reminiscent of Sisyphus in Greek mythology, being forced to repeat the same punishment over and over for all time. Mogidian is forced to relive her captivity, torture, and pain on repeat. Even for somebody as bad as Mogidian, that's pretty rough. Finally, we reached number one on the list. And this is really just a bunch of instances combined, but we have the Bubbles of Evil. Bubbles of Evil are described as little bits of the Dark One's power, sifting up through the pattern and causing unnatural and evil events to occur. There are some truly awful Bubbles of Evil that would have been not only frightening to witness, but terrifying to be a part of. There is Hinderstaff, where residents go crazy every night and kill each other only to be reborn again like Groundhog Day and do the same thing again. If you want to know more about that, I have a video on Hinderstaff linked up here somewhere. We also have playing cards coming to life and attacking Matt in the Tyran Lordlings. Rand's reflections coming out of the mirrors and almost killing him. An entire town sinking into the ground, swallowing the town and a traveling peddler who entered it. Roaches coming from the ground in Ramonda's tent, and even a man having beetles burn from his body as they eat him from the inside out. The Bubbles of Evil are unnatural, scary, and completely creepy, and they are in the number one spot on the list. What were your scariest moments from the Wheel of Time? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Wheel of Time and fantasy related content. You really help the channel out just by subscribing. Turn the bell icon on for updates when the new content comes out. And speaking of supporting the channel, if you enjoy the content, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. This type of content takes a long time to make and YouTube will never really promote this enough for it to be worth it from a money perspective. So support from folks like you that enjoy this type of content really make the channel possible. You can again support me on Patreon if you want to. Thank you to all of my patrons who already support the channel and what I do here. You are beyond appreciated. Lastly, take a look at one of these videos here that you might also like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.